something is happening in Hobbs, New Mexico right now. I can see it right now, it's happening. This is a miracle taking place. They're from Hobbs, New Mexico. There's a miracle happening. There's a miracle happening in Hobbs. Well, you know, after, after uh, hearing all those, uh, I'm really humbled. And if I was emo, I'd go ahead and cry. <laughs> but I'm holding it back right now. Uh, literally, we've never been anything as a couple, as a family, as a staff. We've never been anything but, but in love with God's plan and His Word because it's the truth. Yeah. And literally, um, you know, because of starting later in life, both uh, in marriage and with the children and then uh, pioneering the church, you know, we, we both had life experiences. Um, you know, really, uh, I didn't hear anything on that, on that rap sheet from all of those people that I may have not experienced myself. But the thing about it is, we're all about how big God is and what Jesus has really done. And, uh, and telling the truth. And I think the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. And I think I see in these, um, uh, and these, these couples, these kids, you know, I see, some, I see some things that I didn't even necessarily know about them. You know, I know everybody's got a sheet, everybody's got issues, right. everybody's got baggage. You know, some people still carry carry-ons around, you know, that they got stuff stuffed in. Yeah. But the truth is, is we're just here to give people an opportunity to grow and to, and to learn how to love God. And I've said this over the years, you've got to figure out what that looks like for you. Yeah. Nobody can do that for you. Right. Nobody can lay hands on you and, uh, and, and transfer uh, excitement or can, trans, can transfer a, uh, a desire for you to personally uh, fulfill God's plan for your life. You have, to make, you have to make that decision yourself. Obviously, anointing is tangible and you can lay hands on people. But the bottom line is somewhere along the line, you got to pick up the ball yourself. You got to be willing to do it yourself. And that's been the big lie in most denominations. The Catholic Church, uh, there's a lot of pretenders out there. And uh, I mean, I so appreciate, I so appreciate what Allie said, you know, about being offended because I know all those things happen. What excites me is they're still here. They're still here. Because see, a lot of people get offended and they just move on. And they miss an opportunity. And I can't change that. Because I, you know, I can't talk to everybody personally. I mean, I don't know where they come up with these things in the Bible, you know. Who would pray to Mary? Nobody would pray to Mary. Did Jesus tell people to pray to Mary? When he was hanging up, he says, well, here's my mom. I want you to start praying to my mom. As soon as I'm gone, I want you to go ahead and start praying to my mom. No. He gave her to somebody to take care of, and right. he went on about his business. Right. Right. You know? I mean, it's foolish. Yeah. Foolishness. And that's, that's, what the, that's what the religious world is like. It's foolish. And people get bound in that. Yeah. They'll pack that place out, you know, yeah. Yeah. when it's open. But God's plan is that the Word come alive on the inside of you. Right. And it literally just kind of takes you over. Because that's what he wants to do. But he can't do any of it. To the degree that he takes you over will be the degree that you allow him to take you over. Because he won't force you to do anything. God's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. He's the gentleman of all gentlemen. And he sent his son to prove it. And he did everything necessary for us to know what this, is look like, what this looks like. Derek and Liz, I've got to tell you, that the Lord spoke to me. And he said, you standing behind your son and daughter, encouraging them, supporting them, is the single most valuable thing that you've ever done. Not just for them, but for the two of you. So here's what this looks like. This, likes you, this looks like you having to trust what the Word of God says 
for your life. The Bible in several places, whether it's about Jesus or whether it's about the Father, the Word of God tells us that He is our life. He is our life. And He is the length of our days. Now, if He is our life, then we need to embrace Him as such. We need to do the things that we learn that need to be done in order for that to be honored. It's not a must. But if you don't, you'll never enjoy the life that he has for you. Most people are never encouraged to. You know, I'm too old to be slow, so I have to just be honest with you. You hit this running. You have hobbies, you have sports, you have things you do, you hit them running. Things that you love. Nobody can compensate you like the Father. Nobody can take you through a, uh, the birth of a, of, a, of a baby that you can barely just touch because they're in an um, environment uh, like an incubator or whatever just to keep them alive. To go through the loss of a child, which by the way, God had nothing, nothing to do with whatsoever. Nada. He had nothing to do with that. We would go over there when, uh, before Emily and Chapo and their little baby died. Well, that's devastating on every level. But the bottom line is when you know God and you know God is a good God, he'll receive those babies, but he doesn't take babies. He doesn't take teenagers. He doesn't take anybody. He receives those who have received his son, regardless of their age. You have to get that out of your consciousness. God's a good God. He's filled with life and not death. So you've got to hear the truth. And you've got to understand that your life is in your hands. As I said earlier, God's not some cosmic Santa that's going to show up when you get backed into the corner. When all hell breaks loose in your life, he's not just going to come in with some Superman cape on and fix you. He has standards and orders in his word so that we can go by those. They're actually, in his word, things that every race needs and they're all the same. It's the same for each and every one of us. Wherever we were born and whoever we were born to, his book is the same for each and every one of us. And his word is not a theory. His word is a fact. And he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And there's only one way to come to him. And that's through receiving the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior by faith. There will be no personal visitation. Everything that you will hear about him, you'll hear it from here. His plan has never changed never changed. You cannot see him up front. You cannot see his promises up front. But you can read about them yeah. or hear them from the Word of God. And just like all I've mentioned over and over again about it being a life of faith, and that's exactly what it is. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Yeah. You find out who he is and how he is through this word. Yeah, yeah. And you hear it 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 yeah. for hours and hours. Yeah. 
We got stuff going all the time, hours and hours and hours. We've heard it. The whole family, we've all preached it so much. We've heard it and heard it and heard it, and it becomes a part of you. Huh? It's like you become consumed with the Word of God. But yet, it doesn't make you weird like so many people are who are consumed with religion. It makes you successful. It makes you effective. It makes you a good husband. It makes you a good wife. Makes you a good son. Makes you a good daughter. Makes you a good grandma or grandpa. Great grandpa, great grandma. It makes you the best because that's what God turns us into when we allow His Word to become first place in our life. He is your life. Deuteronomy 30, 20 says, He is your life, and He is the length of your days. Hallelujah. He's your protector. He's your healer, huh, Siobhan? He's your healer. He's your healer. He's your healer. Her relationship with him was enough that he was able to convince her that she could go a different route. It's available, obviously, for everybody. Because the Bible is for whosoever will. And she came to that point where that's what she wanted. And she got the desires of her heart. It's available for everybody. Amen. Just like she said, you know, we're not mad at the doctors. We're not mad at the medicine. Yeah. But the bottom line is, we serve a God who one of his names is uh, Jehovah Rapha. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. The Lord God who heals. Yeah. He's a healer, huh? Yeah. He's, not, he's not that God that you've heard people say, well, you just never know what God's going to do. Right. Well, that's because you don't know what the word says. And when you find out what the Word says, it has to become more real to you than the trip out the Lovington Highway. It has has to become more real to you than seeking the advice of people who don't even know God. He has to become real to you. And He has to become real to you by faith. He's not going to show up in your bedroom. He's not going to show up in your bedroom and reveal Himself to you. He reveals Himself through His Word through his word. He becomes real to you through his word. I'm going to try and not go. I'm not even going to say that. I mean, you're captive. The doors are locked. (laughs) Oh, they're besting out anyway. Romans chapter 10. Romans 10, 17 tells us, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Now the faith that comes by hearing the Word of God is Word of God faith. That's right. Now the Word of God covers everything natural, but it's not natural. That's right. The Word of God is supernatural. That's right. The Word of God is spiritual. You and I, uh, and, and, and please, don't, don't, think that, don't think that you're ever going to hear anything here that's rooted in intellectualism uh, or reason. Uh, the Word is Spirit. That's right. The Word is Spirit. And the reason the Word is Spirit is because we were made in God's image, and He is first and foremost a Spirit. So the Word is intended for our spirit man, for our heart. So that, uh, so that we can make the decisions necessary uh, to live a godly life. The only way you can live a godly life is I listen to, uh, as listen to, listen to James and, and some of the others and to, uh, and to Emily and uh, to those that live the life very similar to most of the rest of us. Uh, the only way that you, can, uh, that you can move away from darkness and that sinful life is allowing the Word of God to become rich in your heart. I yeah, mean, you, right. you hear it so much that honestly, listen, it actually drives it out. Yeah, yes, it does. 
Now, there'll come a point where you have a, to say no. Yeah. But I mean, it'll be even easy to say no. Yeah, that's right. Because the Word of God will have made you receptive to a different way of life. Yeah. It's supernatural. Amen. It's spiritual. Yeah. It's not crazy. It's not goofy. It's not weird. It's spiritual. Yeah. But we're so used to natural, intellectual, yeah. even intellectual messages in churches yeah. right. about how everything's going to be okay right. psychologically. Luego, ooh, and it's, a, yeah. it's not. God is a spirit. That's right. And those that worship him, those that receive from him, those that walk in his life must receive him and his word as spirit. Because his word is life Amen. to those who find it. In every area. And healing and medicine to all their flesh. It's supernatural. It's from God. It's not what man has filtered and now pres presents to people. That hopefully they can understand intellectually. But that won't work. God's word works from the inside Amen. out. Hallelujah. It doesn't work from the outside in. It's got to be in you. And then it's got to be in your mouth. And then it's got to be in your actions. And then it'll be visible. And it'll be experiential. God's not a man that he should lie. He's a spirit. Huh? Hallelujah. God created the heavens and the earth. And we're listening to some chump guy that's got a degree from wherever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're paying attention to, to, to those that have been created instead of the creator. Yeah. What sense does that make? Yeah. I mean, even logically, what sense does that make? Yeah. That we're going to pay attention to man. And really the only thing that you're going to glean from me as you pay attention to me is what I say that he says. Because yeah. right, right. I don't have anything to offer yeah. aside from what he has to offer. Yeah. He's God. Yeah. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Do I care when that was? Not no, <laughs> but no. Yeah. <laughs> Do I care how he did it? Makes no difference to me whatsoever. None whatsoever. Here we are. He created it all perfectly. I do understand that if we were a few miles further away or a few miles closer, we could either be burned up or frozen. So I'm thinking, I've been around long enough that I haven't seen anybody that could intellectually do anything like that. Amen. So I believe God. Yes. Yeah. The very first verse Amen. of his word yes. makes me a believer. Right. And I just begin to, I begin to see by the eye of faith. Isn't that something? Here this God is that I'll see one day. And he saw in his mind's eye, in his heart, what he wanted to, what he wanted to create. He saw it inside. Everything came out of him, including you and I. Everything. He saw it, and he said it, and then we can see it. He can do the same thing with whatever your issues are. You give him, you give him your issues, and he will cause those issues to disappear. He will heal those hurts. Yeah, he will restore your love, yes, your on. joy. Yeah. He will cause you to be the you you were designed to be. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How are you not going to fall in love with a God like that? Yeah. What else are you going to give those people that we just saw in here? What are you going to give them to fix their stuff? Only God can do that. 
Choose life can't do that. Only God can do that. The only thing that Choose Life's good for is to let you know the truth. I'm so grateful they said that because we know that goes on. But see, you can be grateful that we've come to a point where we're not going to let your being offended keep us from preaching the truth. Because we're not, we're not expecting everybody to come to their senses. But we're expecting, how about you? You're glad you showed up, aren't you, huh? You're glad you fought through it. I am too. What an honor to have you all in our, in our body. What a blessing. What a blessing that is. People that come to a place, because you won't do that until there's a hunger there. And you don't even know, and then kids show up at your table, you know? Thank God for those kids. Thank God for young men and women who are not ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, who know that it is the power of God unto salvation to those that, to those that believe. Amen. Amen. That's all we're here for. Now, I'm just here to tell you the truth. Don't settle for some freaking mediocre life. Don't, 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 don't live for some pretending religious stinking experience. Don't let your flesh keep you from the truth of God's word. Fight through that life of BS that you find yourself in. Stop lying to yourself and start making very simple decisions. And it begins with hearing the truth. And once you do that, God will be on you like whatever color you want him to be. God sees no color. He'll be on you like white on rice. I hope that's not offensive. (laughs) Or be like you like brown on rice. (laughs) Or be like you on like Asian rice. (laughs) The moment there's a spark of enthusiasm and a humility and a desire to know the true and living God, he'll begin to take you on the walk of your life. And you will get better and better and better and better the longer you walk with him. And you'll get to the point where you will not allow people's opinions or situations steal from you what the Lord Jesus Christ died for you to have. You will fight for the right to be who God's called you to be when you begin to walk with him because he'll make it real on the inside of you. It'll change your want to's and you won't even miss them. They will no longer have a hold on you because his word will have a hold on you. Hallelujah. It's supernatural. Supernatural. What good did it do for me to write anything down? Yeah. God is so good. He's so good. Hey, if anybody's after me, they're too late. You're too late. I don't need what you have to offer. He's offered me life. He's offered me his life. Glory to God. He bled out for me. Didn't think anything about it. Matter of fact, nobody took his life. He wanted to be sure they understood that. No man takes my life. He said, I lay it down freely. I let him have my life in exchange for his life. Had no comparison. No comparison to having the life of God in you. No comparison whatsoever. No comparison in being confident, bold, knowing how good God is. I pray Jesus tarries long enough 
for those of you in here that have a design on that kind of freedom. I pray he tarries long enough for you to enjoy that freedom in this natural life. That you're able to see things through his eyes, through through the devotion that's available to us through his word. Or you no longer see things through your natural eyes, yet you become supernaturally effective in your natural life. You become someone they don't know how to deal with because of your ability to do whatever you've been called to do naturally. Where you become supernaturally effective in your assignment, no matter what it is. They wonder, who is this? Just like, just like Faith titled her um, uh, stories by Pastor Faith on Friday, those of you that heard it. Who is this man? Who is this man? Who was that man? Who was Jesus Christ of Nazareth? Who was this guy? Who was this guy? Who was this guy that loved his father so much that he would never say anything or do anything unless he saw his father or heard his father say it or do it? Who is this man that became an example for every man, woman, and child who would ever draw breath in this earth? Who is this man that was willing to go to a cross, to go to hell, to spiritually die for people that didn't even know him, didn't have any idea what that looked like, but yet he was willing to do it so you could experience something you would have never been able to experience had he not done it. We could never comprehend what he did, but he did it anyway because that's what needed to be done so that we could step out of darkness and live in light so that we could, we could have our affection totally tied to him so that we didn't bow to the, to, 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 the, to the flesh of man and let them deter us from what belonged to us. Only a supernatural God with a son who had his same spirit could have ever turned our lives around. And yet we sit around in dead churches, listen to dead messages by dead ministers and continue to walk up and down the street like miserable, just like the ones we heard. Miserable. We've all been there. We've spent time in that place, each of us. What is this about? What is this for? This is miserable. This is no life. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? And you'll never know until you know him. You'll never know until you know him. Never. Nunca. You'll never know until you know him. That's why Paul, toward the end of his ministry, he said, his one desire is that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and everything that took place. To know him, the most intimate word that the Jews would use, to know him. Just like the intimacy between a man and a woman, that I might know him, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection. Because the word of God says, if that same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he will quicken or make alive your mortal body. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't know him, He's the only one worth knowing. There is nobody in your life that means anybody. He is the only one that's worth knowing. The only one. Are you listening to me? Somebody quick, get offended. There's no one. He is the man. He is the son of man. The son of God. Without him. Without him, you'll never know anything. You could be a walking encyclopedia. You could have a six pack of PhDs. You could have the most flourishing business in the world. But if you don't know him, you don't know Jack. I don't care who thinks you're amazing. You're nothing without him. Nothing. You're a zero. You're a no-show. You're a loser. 
and most especially people in our nation that have even had a little bit of the truth preached to them who just blow it off and then live their life. Go forward, doing things in their own intellect, doing things in the natural without God ever having a place in their life. Unless something happens. Unless something happens. And all of a sudden, they're all over God. Something happens, they can't handle it. A sick child, a lost loved one, whatever it might be. Then all of a sudden, they're all about it. No, God don't work like that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine having the level of audacity to actually think that we could ever do anything without him? Huh? The creator of the air you breathe. Huh? You ungrateful people online. I wanted to be sure that you knew that I excluded those that were present. Let's just stop and think about it. This might be the last time I see you. You know, this could be the last time I see you. But you know what? Listen, I'm okay with that. Because I know him. I know him. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the people? How about... Just people sitting around like in a church service right now, across the nation, across the world, that have some form of godliness. The only power they've got is show up power. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. They got show up power. They have, they have that in the Catholic church, don't they? They have show up power. Yeah. Now I know there's some born again Catholics, I'm sure. Thank God. Yeah. Got to be some sort of small percentage. But I wouldn't be counting on any of that if I were you. There's probably some born-again Baptists. I'm going to tell you, if there aren't born-again Baptists, there aren't people that are born again. Because they give you a shot at that all the time, almost as much as I do. To know him. It's personal. It's personal. You're talking about my father. You're talking about my savior. You're talking about him like they're you know, somebody from across the street or from around the corner or from another city. No, that's the creator and his son. Those are the only ones that could fix us. And if nothing else, we ought to be excited about finding out about him. You know what I mean? We ought to find a place where we can hear the truth. And what that truth will do when you're in a place where you find out what the truth is, it'll make you hungry. It'll make you thirsty for the truth. You know, I'm still hungry at 76. I'm not the oldest, I'm not the oldest flesh in the, in, the, in the room, but I got years on most of you. I'm hungrier than I've ever been. I see everybody different than I ever saw them because everyone is so unique. You're the only one that was ever created like you. Only one. Hmm? That's why we don't ever have to think anything about being in competition with anybody. There's nobody like you. There's nobody like you. Nobody like you. God loves you just because of you. And we spend time listening to, focusing on, dealing with things that are just like a vapor, Psst. and they're gone. Here we are, eternally created to spend forever with him. Seems like you'd want to be sure you at least recognized him when you showed up there. You didn't have to wear a robe that said God on the front of it. You have a little bit of idea about him. You understand his goodness. You're blessed. How many of you, this is your very first time at Choose Life? Can I see your hand? We're not going to take a picture of you or anything and put it in the paper. (laughs) 
We're really honored that you've come. Some of these other people, to be honest with you, I don't recognize them much. But then again, this is a special day. This is Easter Sunday, by the way, huh? Hey, we can break it out, man. We can break it out today. That sounds offensive, doesn't it? That sounds really condescending, doesn't it? Sounds mean, doesn't it? Sounds ugly, doesn't it? Good. I'm going to pull out my statement honoring Jesus. No, I'm not going to say it that way. That would sound really horrible. He was pretty straightforward. I can't say that I could unloose his sandals, but I can tell you one thing. He's worth all the commitment you're willing to make. He will never disappoint you. He will never let you down. He will always be there for you. As a matter of fact, if you're serious with him, he'll be super serious with you. Amen. Hallelujah. Mentioned the heart earlier. With the heart, man believes. Not with the intellect, not with your head. Not with your human wisdom. With the heart. With the heart, man believes. And when his heart believes, his mouth follows. You know, people that say, well, you know, I just, uh, I, I really just, I don't, I don't like to talk about my faith. Oh, you don't have any. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's just personal. Really? I'm telling you, if you really had some of it, you'd let it all hang out. You'd be loud. You'd be excited, praise God. I mean, the faith that is. The faith that believes God is. And that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Why wouldn't I want to let that out? Why wouldn't I want to let that out? Sal, you know a little bit about that, huh? You could have probably, you could have probably done a testimony, huh? You got a pretty long sheet. Everybody else just kind of laughing. They're saying, he's not going to mention my name, is he? <laughs> Listen, if you've got a long sheet, everybody in the room knows it. Okay, this is Hobbs. <laughs> this is Hobbs. You ain't hiding your sheet in Hobbs. I said, your sheet. You can't hide your sheet in Hobbs. Huh? Your sheet's public knowledge. We found out all about your sheet on fake book. <laughs> Except for you, it wasn't fake. <laughs> it was a gospel. With the heart, man believes. So here's the word of God. The Spirit of God, who's doing the work of God in the earth, begins to speak through the Word to people who have ears to hear. It's an amazing, it's a very simple process. Jesus and God are chilling. They've already finished what they were going to do. Now the Holy Ghost is in the earth. And the Spirit of God has come. To confirm the word. So he's in the room. He's in the room here this afternoon. He's waiting for lunch. He's in the room here. And he's looking for people that have ears to hear. Because he's able to look at everybody simultaneously. Take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. He can fix stuff, restore stuff, remove stuff, reveal stuff. He can do whatever he needs to do. Even a crowd this size simultaneously. He's here to bring conviction. 
You know, most people don't need to be told they're not right. They know they're not right. You know, a person knows they're not born again even before they get an opportunity to be born again. Every one of us knows whether we're right or not. Obviously, every one of us knows whether we personally received the Lord Jesus or not. And every one of us has to make that decision personally. That's the first thing you need to work out. But the Holy Spirit's a gentleman. And he'll let an individual continue throughout life and step off into a Christless eternity. But the bottom line is, why would an individual that if they were honest with themselves would already admit that they've got areas in their life that are tormenting? They're miserable. They're not in a happy place. And they can't remember when they were. Why would a person in that position not receive deliverance from that darkness? I'd give, a, I'd give a, a mic to someone who could give me an intelligent answer for that. Because nobody in their right mind would pass on freedom if they were honest with themselves about the bondage they're living in. You know, they might be like some of the ones that came to the table. I'm going to hell. And like I'm proud of it. Or other ones that are ignorant. I'm going to go to hell because there'll be party in there. I wouldn't want to attend any of your parties. No, only ignorant people. Only people whose eyes are still blinded. Only people who are too proud to choose life. Don't do it. Because when the Spirit of God is in a place and He's in this place, He's looking for candidates that He can relieve from eternal death and deposit in them eternal life. Supernatural. From darkness to light.